What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen, back with another Believe in Colts post-Colts Bills game. We are going to get into that later, what we saw, what we've learned. But before we get into that, I wanted to bring out an interview that we had right before the game with tight end Kylan Granson. All right. Always a pleasure to talk with Kylan Granson. This time I actually had a one-on-one -on -one in person interview with him. Can't wait for you guys to see that. But before we get into that, I just got to remind everybody that Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, NFL, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place all your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games. Available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, as I said earlier, man, I had a, a great sit down with. Kylan Granson, uh, tied in for the Colts. He's the guy. He, he's been the guy uh, last year, right up until he got hurt. Um, seems to be improving co consistently. Uh, this past offseason training camp looks like he's been absolutely stellar and standing out. And these are a few things that he had to say with me. I am here with Kylan Granson, Indianapolis Colts tied in. Man, pleasure to meet you again. Yep, I see. You. And um, so I'm just curious. Um, this time last year, I discussed a few things with the different tight ends. It was a lot different group this year. I mean, you still got Mo and and a couple other guys, but what do you think of the group as a whole so far? Uh, versatile, versatile. I mean, you've heard it before. You'll hear it again very diverse cast of individuals, which is kind of fun because everybody's got a little bit of a different skill set. Mm -hmm. And so everybody learns a little bit differently. They they, they they approach things a little differently, but all together, I think we're just like one glob of tight ends with different strengths, different weaknesses, different techniques, and it makes for a fun thing. <laughs> no, it, it absolutely, absolutely. Um, last few practices that I came to visit, this has got to be frustrating. You get overthrown quite a bit. What's up with that? <laughs> That's just a normal thing preseason. You know, you, everything's getting tightened up right now. Timing's mm -hmm. new. Like, I haven't worked with anybody here except for Sam. So, yeah, that's true. So, everybody here is new. Everybody's adapting to new conditions, new places. You know, new, like, so again, those two guys, they haven't seen this defense. They haven't been with these, mm -hmm. these players. It's kind of just like KYP and new personnel type stuff. So, yeah, it's just, you're going to see it in preseason. That's what it's for. Uh, exactly. getting better, so like it's good that we get it over with now rather than later, yeah. You know? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and uh, speaking of Drew, you and Drew, you're finally able to actually get some practice in. He's not on you know the injury. Uh, what do you think the duo between you and him is going to be like this year? Yeah, he's pretty cool, he's a pretty cool dude. Uh, yeah, I think we have a little uh dynamic between us, you know. I'm the little guy, he's the big guy, yes. but you know, I think that's just about me with every time. Mm. So, um, but yeah, he's a very dynamic player. He's very athletic with the ball in his hands, and he's a great blocker, great on the great on the end. Those six and seven yeah. techniques. And stuff like that. Speaking of blocking, uh, you were talking about how that last year that was something that you really wanted to increase on. This year, I thought you did a much better job last year. From what I'm seeing right now, it looks like you've been working. Is that something that continues to be one of those focal points with you? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, coming out of college, I was only, I'd been a tight end for two years. So, you know, as the years pile up, you know, I'm now on year four of being a tight end. So I'm, I think I'm graduating into, <laughs> you know, from the beginner class to the intermediate level, if not the advanced level. I always was an AP student. But uh, yeah, I definitely feel myself more comfortable blocking down the Stands down the line, red zone, field, yeah. Awesome. Um, another question. This one's going to be kind of just personal preference, real quick. Been here a while. What are some of your favorite stops to go get some grub? Ooh. So there's actually this new spot. I love to DoorDash it. It's on DoorDash uh, prior, like the, whatever the exclusive thing is. Chicken scratch. Really? It's the Keystone. Keystone mm -hmm. Grove. Like that. 
that place, they get wings, and then they just extra seasoning, lathering, ranch, or whatever sauce you want. They got like honey hot, they got ranch. They've got a few. I do, I usually do honey hot, because that, that's like, that tickles my fancy. And then I also get like a thing of truffle fries. That's really good. But like, are you talking about like a date spot? Because that's more like a just. No, if you want to give it. me a different one, that's, I that's mean, cool if, too. if you got if you got oh. some money to spare and you didn't, <laughs> and it's a very special lady. Mm -hmm. There's a place called Vita downtown. Very nice. Love it. They've got like one of those, uh, you know, those wall gardens, like vertical wall gardens, mm -hmm. and that's where they grow all their herbs. So whenever oh, they cook, wow. they just pick it, throw it on the dish. Oh wow! Oh, right, yeah. right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you could see them, like some, some. Well, I'm trying to think. No, it's kind of to the side. But you could see them from over in the dining area. Like, oh my god, he just picked it off the wall. But no, <laughs> it's it's really good. And like me and my girlfriend, we usually do that for our anniversaries. But it's very good. Last question. It has a little bit to do with Anthony Richardson. You're talking about blocking this dude. You can scramble an RPO is, is learning different blocking schemes, you learning a lot of new stuff with a different RPO system going on? Or I wouldn't say learning more so, it's the play stays alive a little bit longer. You know? mm -hmm. So where the play would be blown dead a little earlier with a less mobile quarterback, now he can extend those plays. So now like if you're out on a route, don't stop running because he's probably still alive. So keep it moving. <laughs> or if you are in the pocket and you're blocking and like you feel your defender release and he, you see him off running, okay, find another block, find somebody to block because he's always gonna find space, he's gonna find a way to get on the move, use his legs, and that's just what makes him a very dynamic player. So yeah, a little, little bit, but not not too much. Not too much. Right. Well, thank you again, appreciate you. And uh, thank you, uh, we're gonna be called over there here pretty soon, right? Yeah, I think so. They're <laughs> a lot more different paces. You're gonna see a so. chain and I'm just, ah! <laughs> And that was Kylan Granson. Um, always, always fun to talk with him. And there at the end, I asked about, you know, Anthony Richardson blocking for him earlier. I was talking about how he was getting overthrown quite a bit by Anthony Richardson. And we're going to kind of dive into that, talking about Anthony Richardson in the game, okay? And we, we already saw, right? Anthony Richardson, one of his biggest problems that we noticed is he still overthrowing people? And, you know, I'm looking at it, and that's his accuracy accuracy issue, is that he is overthrowing people. He doesn't know when to take some of that gun oomph off the ball, right? Uh, but I'll tell you what, that's the only really major issue that I see with AR5, okay? That's pretty impressive. It seems like he's able to get through his reads, his progressions. Looks like he's reading the defense. He's got a great feel for the pocket. Uh, most generally, his accuracy is pretty good, other than overthrowing occasionally. And it seems like the overthrows only happen 15 yards or closer. Anything past like 20 or so, it seems like he drops dimes. Absolute beautiful dimes, as we saw when he hit Kylan Granson over the middle, or when he hit Alec Pierce on that deep out um, down by the end zone, right? So that's something that's absolutely fantastic. He's also a great runner. He had a, a, a wonderful run that nearly ended up in a score, uh, got pushed out right about the one-yard line, but it was called back due to a holding call. And then he know another scramble that he ran somebody over, and it looked like that guy that he ran over was surprised because it wasn't just running him over. He like went over there, thought he was going to push him out of bounds or something. And Anthony Richardson lowered his shoulder and ran right over him. Now, look, I understand Richardson 6'5", 250 pounds. I get it. But as Colts fans, we've been there and done that with Andrew Luck. Richardson. If you're on the sideline, right, and you're already past the sticks, just go out of bounds, my guy. I know you, especially in preseason, when the game doesn't even matter, don't put yourself in harm's way with a chance to get hurt, all right? Walk out of bounds. That's that's my personal opinion. I love the fire, the will, the drive, but utilize that in a different way at different times. That's That's what I got out of that. 
Now, obviously, you're going to play the way you want to play, and we're all going to root for you nonetheless. But, yeah, I like what I saw from Anthony Richardson in the first game. The big question is, you know, what's going to happen against Chicago? We'll talk about that later uh, in our preview for that game. Now, let's talk about the other quarterback, Gardner Minshew, who went 6 for 6 had 100% completion percentage in his time. And that's including with an offensive line that looked absolute garbage, okay? We'll get into the uh, offensive line in a minute. But Gardner Minshew's first two snaps ended up sacks, and it was not like he was holding the football waiting. No, no, no. It was instantaneous sacks. Guys got pressure, got inside, knife through, got to Gardner. Nothing he could do about it. Still, somehow, some way, Gardner was able to recoup himself like the seasoned vet that he actually is and create some scoring drives, right, with that offensive line and the second string, you know, tight ends and wide receivers and running backs. So uh, I thought Gardner Minshew looked very good out there, very poised, um, looked like a guy that, you know, in all honesty, you know, if he had to start week one, I wouldn't have a problem with it. You know, and if he if he's going to be our backup, great. I feel incredibly good about him being a backup. You know, I feel like he's a top five backup in the NFL. So Gardner Minshew, he's awesome. I love having him on the team. Um, we'll definitely see more of him again also uh, this upcoming Thursday against the Bears. Now let's get back to that offensive line, okay? First off, let's talk about the starters. Starters look good. Starters look good. Anthony Richardson never got sacked. He got pushed out of the pocket a couple times, but not really right away. It was after a little bit of time, okay? And that's just Gardner going through his progressions, getting a feel. He's got the size and mobility, so he could do stuff like that if he, if he wants to hold the ball a little bit longer. That's perfectly fine. Bernard Ryman looked absolutely fantastic over there on the left uh, tackle position. I want to talk about Will Fries. Every snap that that starting offensive line unit with the starters had throughout the entire first quarter, Will Fries did a fantastic job. He had two mistakes. One time he lost his block, right? He got beat. Didn't end up in a sack, but it did end up in a pressure. But that's it. And then the other time he got hit for a holding call which was declined uh, due to they were already in a third and long situation. So, and they were close to the end zone. So, you know, they declined it. But I feel like Will Fries and Bernard Ryman, both second-year offensive linemen, who last year this time looked like they were incredible project pieces, have started to come into their own. now. Granted, they weren't going up against all the starters on the Buffalo Bills defensive line. But they were going up against good quality opponents. The Bills have a very deep defensive line across the board. So I I am very intrigued by what I saw. And if this continues, then it's going to spell good news for the Colts. Now let's go like we talked about the depth of that offensive line. Oh my. Ho, ho, ho. No, no. I I am not fond of it at all. Okay. Maybe Freeland as a right tackle might turn out to be a, a decent backup tackle, but we need a guard. We, we need a guard badly and a center backup because I'm sorry. French, Pinter, both of them did not perform very well at all at center, and the guards were not good at all, at all. There was so much hype with this guard that came from Alabama. All right? So much hype. And I keep saying, he was undrafted for a reason. And it showed, because even against third stringers, this guard, that we picked up undrafted from Alabama was getting beat left and right. 
left and right. Okay. That makes me very, very worried. If you can't hold your own against, you know, guys that might be flipping burgers in, uh, in a couple weeks, that's, that's a, that's a scary proposition. Okay. Ballard, I hope you got your eyes on other, I'm sure you do on, on other preseason games and keeping an eye on cuts uh, when the, the cuts happen so that we can bring in somebody because we need a swing guard because if Will Fries or God forbid Quentin Nelson goes down, we're in some deep trouble. Okay. So hopefully we could get somebody who could play swing guard on either side, just in case, just in case. Now let's talk about Josh Downs because he had a standout game as well. Uh, him and Isaiah McKenzie both, right, at the wide receiver position. Now that interception from Anthony, uh, from Anthony Richardson, Isaiah puts it on himself. Anthony's going to put it on himself. To me, it's just miscommunication. The two guys haven't been working together very long. And in that certain situation, they didn't know what each other was going to do. And Anthony just guessed, okay, what Isaiah was going to do. That's it, right? Other than that, Isaiah did great on screens. He did great on routes. Josh Downs looked very, very good. This is a very good, very, very good battle for the starting slot position for the offense. I am incredibly excited about that position right there. Now, let's talk about special teams between the two, okay? I don't think Josh Jones should be the kick returner, all right? Punt returner, I could see him being a punt returner. He is really good at changing directions quickly, right? And making someone miss him in short, short little bursts. But he doesn't have that top end speed for a kick returner. That's the biggest problem. He's got great vision, but he doesn't have that top end speed to get down the field. I'd love to rather see guys, you know, like Isaiah McKenzie or, you know, someone of that nature or even number 33, our cornerback, uh, who did it last year towards the end of the season. Let's see him do it. You know, I like to see them do the kick returns and fine, put Josh down at punt return. That's that's how I want to see that because uh, our re, our returns, special teams returns, was not good, was not good at all against the Bills. I want to finish this up by discussing the running back situation. Now, obviously, I just got done talking about how the offense secondary depth of the offensive line was not is not good, so we're not going to discuss that. We're going to talk about the starters, where the run game showed some holes. We seen some holes there. You know, there were a few five, six yard runs by our running backs. But those five, six yard runs, if John, if that was Jonathan Taylor, the guys would not have been able to close on him nearly as quickly, right? Because of his quickness. If Jonathan Taylor had been out there, those runs could have been a lot longer and a lot more dynamic. I was watching them and I'm just like, wow, we are missing that explosive speed at running back. Love our lo lo love the guys that were out there doing it, man. They were showing a lot of heart and push. But Jonathan Taylor just brings that offense, especially the run game, to the next level. The absolute next level. So I I really feel like this is a situation where, and from what I'm understanding, Jonathan Taylor is looking to try to get an extension with the Indianapolis Colts. And if the Colts don't want to give him an extension, then he wants to be traded. Yes. But he, his first and foremost thing is he wants an extension with the Colts. Ballard needs to see him come off the pup list and practice and show that he's still who he is. So. I'm going to put the Jonathan Taylor thing on hold for a little while because he's still on the pup. He isn't practicing. 
We don't know what the plans are for the Indianapolis Colts for Jonathan Taylor. Other guys that we haven't yet to see. Now, obviously, like Mo Alley Cox, right? We haven't seen Mo Alley Cox. Does he look like the Mo Alley Cox from last year or the or, or the or the year before? That's a there's a huge difference between the two. Jelani Woods missed a ton of practice time, right? When are we going to be able to see him? DeForest Buckner on the defense. DeForest Buckner hasn't been able to play because he's been injured. Kenny Moore the second's been injured, right? And Julian Blackman's been injured. We got a lot of good starters that aren't able to start because they ain't been able to practice due to injury. Hope and pray that they could get back, get start practicing, maybe get a few snaps like Shaquille Leonard got during the preseason. The very last thing I want to talk about is the cornerback situation. Now, we all was worried about the cornerback situation. Me personally, I felt like it was the scariest position on the team due to inexperience, you know. With Stephon Gilmore traded and then Rodgers um, being released due to the situation he had, we have a whole bunch of rookies and second-year corners on our team. That's it. That's what we got. But guys that have really stepped up that I have noticed, it's been impressive. Daryl Baker looks like he's playing his butt off out there. Jalen Jones, well, heck, he had a pick six, didn't he? Uh, you know, our rookies look like they're playing well. They 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 have a they're playing with a lot of effort. Are they making rookie mistakes, inexperienced mistakes? Yes. They've only got one preseason game under them. Give them a few games, see how they start to uh, develop. We could be in for a surprise with our cornerback situation come week one. Not guaranteeing it. I'm just saying there is that possibility because of what I saw against Buffalo. I think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, please smash that like button and hit subscribe. And if you're listening to this on an audio podcast, Make sure you leave a review. I'd appreciate it a lot. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. This is Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 